Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to talk about the renal blood supply, that is the blood supply to the kidneys. All right, so here is one kidney right here. This is actually the patient's right kidney, right? And hopefully we know at this point that there's going to be a renal artery that's going to be ultimately the blood vessel that supplies blood to the kidney, right? But we have microscopic pieces of the kidney. We talked about this in the previous video. We have individual nephrons. And so this renal artery is going to have to divide many, many times in order to get individual tiny blood vessels to each of those nephrons, okay? So again, the renal artery is going to enter the kidney through the hilum region or the hilus of the kidney. Now, that renal artery is going to divide into what we call segmental arteries. So if we look at this kidney right here, we see that the renal artery divides into these, which are called segmental arteries. So what the segmental arteries more or less do after they branch from the renal artery is they really just take the blood up until pretty much you get around to the minor calyx region. Remember, we talked about that in the anatomy video. Um, and then the segmental arteries divide into what are called interlobar arteries. So if we look at an interlobar artery, what we see is that they kind of go in between, sort of from the base to the top of each of these renal pyramids. So remember, each one of these is a renal pyramid. And the interlobar arteries go from the segmental artery all the way across the renal pyramid, sort of up to its top, okay? Now, if we look at the top of each renal pyramid, we have what are called arcuate arteries. So the arcuate arteries really go over the top of each of these renal pyramids, okay? So we go from interlobar to arcuate arteries. Now, these tiny arteries right here that branch from the arcuate arteries that go up into the cortex region of the kidney, these are actually what we call cortical radiate arteries. Um, another term you'll see for these is interlobular arteries. Not interlobar, interlobular. Okay, I think I actually have that term over here. Let me actually zoom back out a little bit. So uh, we actually have cortical radiate or interlobular arteries. These are the arteries that are branched enough that take blood to each individual nephron. Okay, so these are your interlobular arteries. If we look at this picture right here, this is actually an interlobular artery right here. So this one that goes across the top of the renal pyramid, this is going to be the arcuate artery. And we actually see that its other structural features that it separates the cortex from the medulla of the kidney, but the arcuate artery goes into the interlobular artery. So each interlobular artery serves several nephrons, as you see here, and the part of the nephron it serves directly is what we call the glomerulus, okay? That is the capillary network inside the corpuscle right here. So the afferent arterial from each interlobular artery, afferent arterial supplies the glomerulus, which is a capillary bed, and that capillary bed called the glomerulus is where filtration occurs in the kidney. But then that blood has to go somewhere, so it leaves the glomerulus or leaves the renal corpuscle via efferent arterioles. Okay? Now, as we're going to see in later videos, the entire nephron right here has all these tubules, and we're going to be constantly reabsorbing things into the blood and draining things from the blood. What we're going to see is that if we look at this loop right here called the loop of Henle, the loop of Henle is... Uh, supplied by a network of blood vessels called the vasa recta. Okay? The other tubules, the proximal convoluted tubule and the distal convoluted tubule and portions of the collecting ducts, these are actually supplied by paratubular capillaries. But in any case, the efferent arterioles are eventually going to turn into these two uh, capillary beds called the vasa recta, which supplies the loop of Henle, and the paratubular capillaries, which supply the PCT, DCT, and collecting ducts. Now, again, they serve two different parts of the nephron, but in any case, the paratubular capillaries in vasa recta are going to eventually merge back to form um, one common vein called the cortical radiate vein or the interlobular vein, same thing. So again, when we're looking at the interlobular vein, um, we don't really see too much of it, but it's actually this blue vein right here. 
Okay, it's going to be draining those paratubular capillaries and the vasorecta, which are actually down here. Okay, so paratubular capillaries are up here, the vasorecta are down here, but in any case, they're going to merge and ultimately become continuous with the interlobular vein. Now, the arcuate vein drains the interlobular vein, and in the same way that the arcuate artery was on top of the renal pyramid, the arcuate vein is also on top of the renal pyramid. Okay? And then the interlobar vein is going to drain the arcuate vein. And then at that point, the interlobar vein, which runs beside the renal pyramid, is going to be drained by the segmental vein. So the segmental vein basically goes from the base of the renal pyramid all the way through uh, the sort of central region of the kidney, and eventually the segmental veins converge as the renal vein, which then is the major vein that drains the kidney. Okay? So what you can see here, at least with these first five, there's an artery and vein for each, and they pretty much just repeat going backwards of each other. So you go from renal artery to segmental to interlobar to arcuate and then to interlobular. Of course, here you have all the um, afferent and efferent arterioles and so forth. But then you get back to interlobular vein, arcuate vein, interlobar vein, segmental vein, and then renal vein, which exits through the hilus, and then ultimately just gets the blood back into the general circulation. Okay, So notice the parallel right here, except they run anti-parallel, I should say. All right. So hopefully this video gives you a good understanding of the blood flow through the urinary system. In the next video, we're actually going to switch gears and talk about the glomerulus and the renal corpuscle and actually see how this network of the afferent arterial, glomerulus, and efferent arterial contribute to the filtration process by which we filter the blood, get rid of wastes, and form urine. It'll span actually quite a few videos where we talk about the nephron. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.